Hi everyone, it's Roger and James here from the What's On Disney Plus podcast. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking about some of this week's biggest Disney Plus news. We'll be talking about Loki shifting to Wednesdays. We'll be talking about Turn the Tables, an Australian shipwreck show, plus the Muppet special. Plus we'll be talking about um, some of this week's Disney Plus originals, including Star Wars, The Bad Batch, and all the Star Wars content. So before we get into any of that, quick bit of housekeeping, if you haven't already done so, make sure you do subscribe either on the audio platforms or the video platforms as well. Um, and if you aren't already a member, you can become a member of our Patreon or YouTube channel members, which help support the channel, keeping everything going. And um, a big thank you to our members in the gold, diamond and platinum level. First off, big thank you to Sarah um, for all of your support. Um, also a big hello to Andrew, Jacob, Caleb, Res Mars, Man, Andrew, Cody, Darren, The Juice, Lauren, um, James and that's from patreon and while over on youtube we've got amit ray and melissa my vcr still works bina bad dog gamer joshua ben adam dawn martin jeremy and sarah thank you for all of your support really does make a massive difference and i'll be doing another live chat this coming sunday where you can all join in right okay let's jump into some of the big news this week and the big one really was Wednesdays are the new Fridays, according to um, Loki. He um, they've announced that Loki will be moving forward a few days. We will now be releasing on June the 9th, and it's going to be every Wednesday morning. We're going to be getting new episodes of Loki. Now they did a cool little video with Tom Hiddleston, kind of making kind of fun about the fact of being a bit of a trickster and a bit different, and then kind of saying about Wednesdays being the new Fridays. And apparently even Wednesday is actually even a name um, that's come from Odin. That's kind of um, where the name originally originated was, yeah. which I didn't realize. So that was a, a, a nice, one. and everyone got, oh yeah, it's a great idea. It's like, no, it's just, just coincidence, people. <laughs> uh, it's a happy coincidence. Yeah, no, I, I think I learned that from American Gods, the Neil Gaiman book, not the television show, but uh, he was known as Woden back in the day, oh. Odin that is. So and Wednesday comes from him. And then Thursday is Thor's Day. So obviously yeah. Loki cannot be released on Thor's day. That would just not work no. at all. But in terms of like it actually happening, uh, I actually kind of would have preferred if Loki had been Friday and they shifted everything else up to Wednesday, just kind of uh, make Friday the special day still. But I mean, I'm not going to complain, obviously. No, I'm happy well, either way. Well, there's a couple of ways. There's a few things of why people are looking at this. First off, Black Widow is the one that stands out. They don't want Loki arriving on the same day as Black Widow. And I'm like, well, they wouldn't move a whole series just for one movie, but also they, when they had Rise of Skywalker come out, they shifted Mandalorian a few days early. Um, I personally feel like this is a case of, I think that they've got so much coming out on Fridays that um, what happened with like Falcon and the Winter Soldier is that it completely dominated the headlines. And so like Mighty Ducks and Big Shot really struggled to go like toe to toe and now we've got star wars the bad batch and going through this summer we have got so many shows you know we're past the point now of having one drama series multiple shows dropping daily on sorry on the friday so spreading them out a little bit makes means loki's getting its own little thing and then they can then maybe do like mini pushes then for big shot and whatever is in star wars the bad batch and you've also got that big problem of on a Friday morning, what are you going to watch? Are you going to watch Star Wars The Bad Batch to avoid spoilers first, or are you going to watch Loki first? Most people are only going to be able to watch one when it first drops, especially on the west coast of the US. So I suspect Loki's going to win, and then Bad Batch is then going to go down the line. Um, and so for me, this makes a lot of sense with having two big franchises. I mean, I don't necessarily put Bad Batch in the same category. It's like The Mandalorian, but it's still a big, you know, Star Wars is still Star Wars. Uh, and then you've got the international element of star so like then we've got other multiple shows dropping um every single friday so where we're getting five eight to ten to twelve shows on a friday so taking loki and putting it on its own separate day i we've been saying for a while they need to separate these things out a little bit um and in june we're going to see this anyway because monday will be gordon ramsay in the u.s and um, the day after it airs on national geographic wednesday will be loki and then friday and I'm like, oh, you know, we're starting to sprinkle up the, the love a little bit. And I don't think this is a bad idea. And maybe they're experimenting with the idea of uh, moving it around. And people are like, well, I, I like the idea of everything being on a Friday and you have that special weekend feeling. But it also looks like, you know, they might be trying to shift a little bit away from Fridays because they're going to start having movies being released. <laughs> 
yeah, the theaters are starting to open up again and they're going to want to kind of work around that. But this is also kind of why I was thinking it'd be nice to have the smaller things come in on like a Wednesday or, or Tuesday or whenever. It doesn't really mm-hmm. matter which day. Uh, I think it's easier for them to get the smaller stuff out of the way earlier and then you can have big shot you know after work on wednesday afternoon or or thursday morning or whatever and friday morning keeps that oh i I gotta get up to get uh bad batch and loki but i also totally understand why you would just give it its own day uh Mm -hmm. make wednesday is loki day uh stealing it from odin and there's no there's nothing in the way you you don't have to to make that decision like you were Mm -hmm. saying yeah i just and so when good Loki's only six weeks, kind of, you know, they can shift it around a little bit. But um, I mean, Bad Batches, I think they've said it's going to be a 16 episodes um, run. So we've got at least another 14 weeks of episodes. So that takes us right through till mid-August. Um, so that one's going to be around for a while. Um, yeah, it's I'm, it's that kind of thing. You're like, ooh, um, oh, yeah, it's like, okay, shift it all up a little bit. It's nice to get it a couple of days earlier. And so therefore, I'm looking forward to that. And it does spread it out a little bit. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing because I just, you know, now I've, I think the days of us having one drama series a year <laughs> are, long, are, long, are long gone. <laughs> um, and now that we are in the zone of multiple shows and the pipeline isn't sh- slowing down, you know, they've got lots of stuff coming, lots of shows, lots of things in development. You know, that train is now underway. And, um, and also, I mean, you look at like, like with uh, Luca, you know, now like you'd have had Luca and Loki and Bad Batch and High School Musical and Big Shot all arriving all on the same, all on that same day. So it just, I do think like moving one of them out the way and Loki makes the most sense because that's going to pull people in. And it kind of, I, you know, it, and there's a lot of people now talking about like things like Big Shot. Uh, people go, oh, it's, it's good. It's like, yeah, because it, it, it lot got lost in that, shuffle of multiple shows and it's a it's a weird situation to suddenly be in where we now have multiple shows and you know is there enough attention about certain ones but certain ones are more popular and they will be more popular it's certainly a better problem to have than we had last year <laughs> I, I would definitely go with that even if you eliminate the hulu and and uh star content you know we get a crazy number of drops every single week this week and it's stuff that people want to watch too it, it's mm. it's not like we need to get something out there uh, find this vault content that we weren't going to do because uh, we weren't interested, but now we just need content. They're not at that point anymore. I mean, I, you know, I'll be, I'll be lucky enough to say that, you know, I get to watch some of the shows a little bit earlier, so I can spread them out a little bit more during the week. But even for me on a Friday, you know, it was like, I'm like, this week was like, oh, okay, well, I've already, it's like, I've done Bad Batch and I've done Big Shot and I've done Mighty Things, but then I'm straight into Solar Opposites and then I watched an episode of the new episode of Grownish. Um, so I'm like, there's still multiple shows that I'm even on a Friday morning of, you know, it was, there is just so much. So I am glad that they've shifted it over. Um, I have stated now on a Wednesday, I will be a little bit more later to work. I hope it's like, nope, I will be in late. <laughs> I've, I've, I've shifted my patting around a little bit for Wednesdays because it's like, yep, Loki's, it's Loki's time. I've got to watch it. Oh, that's the rule. Um, well, it, it helps <laughs> that you're the boss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can do that. Um, but yeah, so that's the kind of thing really of um, so the Wednesday shift. I do think it's a good move. Um, I can see motor, I can see lots of good reasons. The only shift is um, that Friday kind of Disney owned it. But I think with Bad Batch around, it kind of feels like, yeah, I don't think that's a bad idea. Yeah, it, something needed to move out of the way of everything else. That that's what it boils down to. It's Loki, and I fully agree that this is also a test. Um, you know, we had that uh, poll that they sent out not that long ago. Would would you want it on different days? I personally didn't get the poll, but I know a lot of people did. Uh, and yeah, it makes sense that with all this content, they will be moving days around. Yeah, I mean, it's good. Um, it kind of. They've gone past that point now where they can, they said they've got that one drop, you know, with all the live. It still makes nice to have Fridays as the main date, but, you know, dropping a few extra episodes here and there is never a bad thing. Okay, moving on from there, we had a couple of other official announcements this past week. Um, Muppets Haunted Mansion was announced yesterday. That kind of came out of nowhere. Um, so Gonzo and Pepe the Pro, uh, King Prawn um, announced it. Um, 
that it's going to be coming to the fall, into Disney Plus in the fall, and it is going to see the Haunted Mansion will take place on Halloween night when Gonzo is challenged to spend one very daring night in the most grim, grimming place on Earth, the Haunted Mansion. And this is all part of the Halfway to Halloween, Halfway to Halloween event, which was launched yesterday at the theme parks, basically getting everyone ready for the Halloween products that will be arriving, the special events that will be taking place at the theme parks. Because if you didn't know, theme parks actually start ha doing Halloween in August. <laughs> so um, it, I'll be honest, when this came all in yesterday and I saw all the news about the Halloween products and stuff, I'm like, going, really? We're at Halloween already? Um, it's just like, it just it feels a long way away. <laughs> it does feel a long way away, but I also get why Disney really wants to to be pushing it, especially this year. It's it's potentially the first return to normal event yeah. that they have now. It won't be fully normal, but I know they already announced the uh, the not so scary Halloween parties for this year, and a lot of people weren't sure if they were going to do that. So, I. Uh, yeah, they're going to be pushing this hard, and we will yeah. be seeing a lot of Halloween merch and uh, mm. and projects. I don't think the Muppets will be the, the last we hear of this. No, I, I mean, I'm just really loving the idea of having the Muppets having a special. I'm also thinking as well, they've had a perfect opportunity with Disneyland being closed, where they can actually get in there and film stuff in the actual attraction. Because a lot of people like saying, oh, they're going to read and like, Yeah, but they've had a really unique situation, because none of them not normal circumstances you know they might have to film at night and would they be able to get it done in time because they've only got like a few hours well this time they've been able to kind of you know the ride's been shut for a year for a year get in there set stuff up with lights and all the rest of it and you know do it properly they never would have had an opportunity to do that so you know that's something that, that's very different to normal although i would i would be interested in seeing a muppet takeover of haunted mansion like they do with jack skellington every year yeah. Uh, that's over in land. I don't think no, they don't do it, they, they don't they do don't it in the world. So no. it'd, be, it'd be nice if uh, if maybe the Muppets took over it in the world. Yeah, it's I. I mean, I just this, this news came out of nowhere. I mean, this one just dropped. I'm like going, ah, and I'm like, more Muppets the better. Can't do enough for the Muppets. Um, just makes total sense. Interconnection with the theme parks looks good. I'm excited. Um, it just it just feels really strange just to be now talking about full series and stuff that are being announced and like teaser trailers. <laughs> I was just like, okay, we're on to Halloween already. <laughs> we're on to Halloween. I mean, we'll yeah. be, we'll be talking about Christmas by the end of June. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, um, but yeah, it, just, I, it did feel a bit weird. <laughs> it does. Uh, it, that's that's the the problem with being part of a news cycle because yeah. you know you can't. You can't make the, the Halloween announcements on October 30th. That just doesn't no. work. No, it is. Well, I mean, usually like all the like the Disney stores, um, or like the Harrods and stuff start opening up their Christmas stores and stuff in like July and so on. So and it's oh, not yeah. that far off. Um, also this week, um, another series was announced, um, which is called, uh, let's bring it up here. It's Turning the Tables with Robin Roberts. Now all four episodes are going to be arriving on Friday, July the 30th. So this is going to be a roundtable uh, round talk <laughs> uh, um, with female celebrities from all walks of life. With LeBron James will be serving as the executive producer on the series. Robin Roberts is the presenter of Good Morning America. Now I'm going to stand up and say, you know, we have Good Morning Britain. Very different. Um, and I, yeah, so I don't, I'm not really familiar with her. Um, some of the people that were involved in this include Jamie Lee Curtis is in there. You've also got um, Debbie Allen. You've got Sophia Carson, uh, Romaine Simone. Uh, you've also got uh, Billie G. King, King and a few other people as well. Um, this kind of, again, A, they're announcing it so far out. I mean, July the 30th, it's not like it's that's, you know, they've skipped June. They've gone straight, <laughs> straight into July. Um, I'm surprised they're doing all four episodes on the same time, but this is definitely an adult show. It's not aimed at kids. Um, the trailer I saw was like, and I'm going to be honest here, um, you know, hearing Sophia Carson talking and stuff, it was a little bit like, oh, I really like the, you can really tell the difference between the older actress from Grey's Anatomy, which I see all the time, you know, that I've heard kind of making a joke and all the rest of it. And then kind of this kind of the scripted kind of idea of, and I, it's for me, I've always found this difficult with American television where it can come across a little bit pre-rehearsed. Um, it all feels a bit like, un, like not really how people talk, but 
Um, we can only go off the one minute clip that we've seen. What about you? Yeah, I actually didn't realize it released a clip. So I did not watch the clip, <laughs> but I did see the news about it. I saw the list of uh, actresses who'd be involved. Not really my thing. I mean, I, I haven't actually watched live television since pre-coronavirus. Like, so before lockdown I, and lockdown to get me up there. So I have no connection to Good Morning America or Britain for that matter. Um, <laughs> but this is an interesting project. I think the target audience will enjoy it. And mm -hmm. depending on how candid they're allowed to be, uh, it could be very uh, enlightening. But like you said, these two these shows do have a tendency to feel kind of um, not necessarily pre-scripted, but maybe like pre-rehearsed or or heavily edited, something like that. Yeah. And also, um, I mean, it looks quite. I think the whole thing, like turning the tables, are where the present, uh, you know, the the guests can then ask questions to each other, and also to the host and stuff. So the problem is for me instantly is half the people I don't know who they are. So that always causes a little bit of a problem because the names, you know, that's why I only pulled out the names are recognised. Um, so there is that issue um, internationally which is something we've said i've said multiple times whenever disney do these kind of shows um that sometimes they get these celebrities on but it's, they're not as well known internationally so that's one issue um i'm just liking the idea of them doing something a little bit different a little bit more mature getting away from this idea that not everything has to have superheroes and space ships in you know they can do different stuff um i think this is maybe good for like the parent crowd as well something just a little bit older and i don't think that's a bad thing um, again, it's not. Uh, it, it's not my kind of show. It, it's something I, I, you know, I'll obviously watch like an episode or so to see what it's like. But it, it's not. Nothing drew my attention to it, and that's just, you know, it kind of feels like it's. An ext it looked a little bit like they borrowed the, the um, set from the Meghan and Prince Harry. Um. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they may have. Honestly, it might be. <laughs> it, it, it looked a bit like okay, yeah. So I see where they go with it. Um, so um. Yeah, it's just nice to have some different, some some variety is never a bad thing. Variety is never a bad thing, and of course, it's always important to remember that not every piece of content has to be for every single person. No. So we're not the target audience for that, but that's also fine. Um, yeah, I hope yeah. I hope the people that they're aiming for do watch it, and I hope that it it meets expectations, or at least people are entertained by it or learn something about these actresses that they didn't know before. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, just more choice. Um, speaking of choice, we also had it revealed this week that. Disney are now working with a company down in Western Australia, creating a brand new doc six part documentary called Shipwreck Hunters Australia, where they will be um, diving into the deep of some of the state's 1600 shipwrecks. The series will be created by a team of highly skilled divers, underwater filmmakers, and an expert marine archaeologist from the Western Australia Museum. They will dive into the planet's most spectacular ocean environments, showcasing thrilling discoveries and look, um, looking to locate some of the iconic shipwrecks, combining new evidence. Um, very much kind of feels in the uh, National Geographic wheelhouse. Um, and I, I'm going to be at this instantly. It was like, oh, I'm in, I'm in on this. This is straight, um, you know, I love underwater stuff. The idea of kind of getting a documentary of this kind of level, um, I'm going to be honest with you. Western Australia is one of the most beautiful places on the world. I spent over a month trekking through that place. It's it's an amazing place. The waters are amazing. Um, you know, it, when people think of like like Australia with reefs and stuff, most people would think of um, the Great Barrier Reef. Well, actually, uh, Ningaloo Reef on on the on the WA side is probably nicer and less well visited. And this, so, yeah, over there, beautiful place. You know. Um, I have had the opportunity once to do a, a scuba dive around a, a shipwreck, you know, and I know you've done some scuba diving. I think it instantly was just like, yeah, I'm in. This is, I'm so, I mean, it's probably going to be a year or two before we see it if they've just started filming now, because these kind of things take a lot longer to film. But yeah, I was like, yeah, and also Australian content. Great, let's bring in some Australian content. Um, you know, I love all of that stuff. Um, again, I, you know, we... It kind of grew up on Australian TV over here in the UK and uh, having spent a lot of time in Australia in my life. Um, for me, I'm just like, yeah, bring it on. The more of it, the better. Now, I, I have never spent any time in Australia, but I do want to someday. Uh, and I did dive, not in Australia, obviously, but 20, 20 something years ago. But still, I, I love diving. Um, I did do some shipwrecks, not into the shipwrecks. We, mm. I wasn't qualified for that. So we yeah. only did around the outside. But this stuff is 
fascinating. The things that they're going to find, obviously it's going to be curated so that it's interesting entertainment. I think it really depends on what kind of wrecks they're diving. Are we going to see like some World War One ships? Are we going to see a lot of uh, fishing vessels? They didn't specify, but I mean, honestly, all of it sounds interesting. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, I mean, especially within that peninsula, you're going to have a lot of people coming in. Um, I know a lot of off, off the um, Northern Territories, there's a lot as well, because of obviously in World War II, there was a lot of activity going on there. Lots of bombings and stuff with Japan. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of things they can go on. Um, so I'm just really liking it. Um, I'm liking it as well. This is the thing, this is the benefit of these quotas that are being kind of introduced everywhere. You know, we're starting to see this of localized content being created. The press release didn't state um, that it was global, but it kind of went out in every area. I, I, there's, there's no reason why this wouldn't be. It's, it's going to be spoken in English. So therefore, you know, they can use it everywhere. Perfect opportunity, more local content, and also more importantly, just you know that then there's also a good selling point for WA. That's why they're you know the, the their con- uh, governments and stuff are funding the show because it's great advertising to kind of get the word out about WA and all the rest of it. Um, that, that I'm sounding a bit, but like I'm on the on the <laughs> tourist board, but it, it is a lovely area, and um, I can def- for me this is just like yeah, perfect, and just more more Australian content the better. You know, we want more local content, and we want it also available internationally. We want it everywhere. And they keep seeing these trailers for, you know, all these different shows and stuff that are starting to pop up now everywhere. And it's like, you know, Disney need to get on that. Start thinking more like Netflix. Make the most of everything. I want that Netherlands soccer show, honestly, yeah. just to see what it's like. I, I mean, they keep they keep it, talking about it every once in a while. I'm like, is this going to come anywhere other than the Netherlands? It, it, yeah, it's also like all of the like the Latin American ones of like, oh, those two, you know, yeah. like if you especially if those being dubbed into three different languages, they've been in like Mexican, Portuguese, and whatever one was, but they're doing like different versions of it, and I really like well if you're dubbing it, well we you know it's it just feels like just put some subtitles on and put it on there and let us choose, you know it's that kind of feeling of you know Disney are very protective of the idea of how they used to do it, but Star has just blown that all out of the water, um, but. You know, there's some great shows on Netflix that are um, subtitled. And it is annoying when you fire them up and you don't, it, you feel like you've been lied to because the description <laughs> and the trailer, and you get going and then they suddenly go, oh, okay, now I'm going to have to change my, change, you know, do I want to watch this? Because especially if it's subtitled, if it's subtitled only and I'm in second screen watching mode, that's not going <laughs> to No, I, I do like subtitled content, but obviously you you have to watch subtitled content it's not the the second screen experience it's not the i'm working um well let's have mighty ducks up on the side well yeah, that's why work. i that's why i've been liking um i like, like the, two, the two big ones i think was like money heist was because it's dubbed you can kind of if you're not watching it it doesn't re- you know if you like is the story's going on and you're kind of hearing it and if you look at it doesn't kind of that shows definitely for me something like i don't need to focus so much i'm just listening to it it's the main thing but yeah, so more local content is great. Okay, so that kind of covers the big kind of ones this week. Those are the big official announcements. So let's move now on to some of this week's show reviews. And, you know, like this <laughs> continues to grow. So we're going to do um, Star Wars off the bat. Let's be honest, we'll be talking spoilers, but I don't think there's really much there, um, too much. So we had lots of content drop on Star Wars Day. Um, we're going to do the other ones first. So we had a brand new short from the simpsons which was really surprising they literally announced this like the day before maggie simpson in the force awakens from its nap um lovely little shorts kind of too short um loads of little references lots of little easter eggs easter eggs i watched it multiple times what did you think of it it was entertaining i mean uh it's a short there's not much time for them to do anything it was literally just Let's throw in as many references as we can. And uh, and that, it was fine for what it was. I, I enjoy the Simpsons shorts. I'm glad that they're taking advantage of them. I will never watch this again, but I did enjoy my three minutes with it. Yeah, I did watch it twice just to kind of figure out, okay, like, let's just go back. And forth. Love, I love love this kind of stuff. The more of this, better. Bring on bring on the shorts. And I'll not be funny, but it makes total sense for a little cross synergy when you utilize Simpsons and also get around the Fox deal. You can kind of use them and Maggie Simpson seems to be the way of getting around um, using, not yeah. using things. This is like the third short that they've done in this little play school uh, setting with her. Second or third? It was the third one, but I think the, the first one was released years ago. And then it was mm. it was the one, that they've only done the two that they 
specifically done. But yeah, I just think this was great, and it was great um, to have that one here. We also had Star Wars Biomes, which was a virtual vacation in... And I watched this one, and I was going into this going, oh, is it going to be like a screensaver? And, like, and it was so tranquil of just flying over Hoth, and, you know, and I was, and I, I ended up putting it on again after, because I was typing something up, and I'm like, this is really good. And a load of people have been, like, really bigging this up, and kind of enjoying it and saying, we want more of this, other planets. It was a much higher quality production than I was expecting. And I'm really finding it quite funny that Disney's, you know, found this, like, little niche of, like, making really long, boring content that people will watch because they're looking for something just to fill the TV up with. And I'm in that category of going, this is, you know, just little noises, a little bit of music, and just scenery just to put on your... And maybe, you know, with us, so many of us working from home, it just makes a lot of sense of just, like, I liked it, and I want more of it. This was This was pretty cool. I mean, these kind of things have been popular for quite a few years now. Like you go, you dive into YouTube and you'll find yeah. like two hours of sitting in Hogsmeade with Harry Potter and, and all it is is just ambience. There, there's no talking except like random noises. And so I'm glad that Disney is doing this. But again, we need to re-highlight the fact, let us make a playlist of these and let us put them on auto repeat, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we had the other one, which was the vehicle one where we kind of walked around the Imperial Star Destroyer and also the Millennium Falcon. Wasn't so keen on this one. This one seemed a little bit strange. It's like I couldn't quite work out what they were, what where, what this was. I kind of grasped biomes made sense to me, but the vehicle walkthrough was like, why, why are we doing this? Um, it kind of made it's it, it definitely kind of you're like it is it's filler filler content um, for sure. But they, you know this that one looked like it cost probably a little bit. You know, there's obviously a little bit of efforts gone into making it yeah and i mean they probably did some some scans of like the millennium falcon over at uh at galaxy's edge and things like that to to ease the way it's just a different type of yeah. this same uh biome thing and some people will prefer the technical ones or like oh I, I grew up watching the millennium falcon and now i get to do a walkthrough but of course it's not self-directed you're on rails it's uh you know where they take you same with the star destroyer I, it's it's more content that's that's what it is yeah, um, yeah like you say it would, have, it would have made a lot more sense as a vr experience where you can kind of control it yourself and walk through and look around but yeah it's fine it, um it was it was the least it was the one of the three of like i mean i think you'd even said to me before and go what was that fourth one that we <laughs> I I don't even it. remember this one um but what's kind of interesting about this is you kind of forget that most of the vehicles in star wars are little star fighters like x-wings yeah. a-wings tie fighters like let's do a walkthrough of a tie fighter uh, it's a circle. <laughs> just, I mean, they you, you just have to play Star Wars Squadrons in VR, and you get the yeah. experience of that one. And then you, I, go, <laughs> feel, then you get to feel sick when you've looked around too much, and you look. Yeah, uh, the, the VR, <laughs> the now, VR in the X Wing looks amazing, or any of the the Rebel fighters looks amazing. The the Tie fighters, you're definitely like. I don't feel like I am fully utilizing my <laughs> VR here, <laughs> but no, that one, but yeah. yeah I, I wouldn't mind them adding a couple more to this. You know, uh, go through the Corellian Corvette from the beginning of A New Hope, maybe some Death Star hallways. You could do the Mon Calamari Cruiser from Return of the Jedi. Uh, there's there's plenty of other yeah. options here. Yeah, definitely. Um, you just have to look at the like the Star Wars Armada um, game. They're all the big ships. You know, they got loads of them that they could use. Okay, let's talk about the big one. So Star Wars The Bad Batch. We got an hour, just over a 17-minute episode dropped on Tuesday. And then we had a second episode to drop yesterday. Um, what was your opinions on Star Wars The Bad Batch? Uh, so obviously I watched both of them, but I, I'm not super enamored to it yet. Now, keeping in mind, I also was not super enamored with Clone Wars when that started out. So, you know, obviously seven seasons of that have, have earned uh, Dave Filoni and his crew some, mm -hmm. uh, some leniency. But like The Bad Batch themselves... I, I just not connecting with him. And the one character I did connect with, or at least a little bit was of course, crosshair and yeah. like, Oh, well, he's the bad guy now. Uh, having said that, I did like seeing Kanan at the beginning of the episode. I did like seeing, I didn't like, see this. That was an odd one. Cause I hadn't picked that up. It wasn't until afterwards that people were talking about it and going, Oh, um, right. It's like, I kind of thought at the beginning, going, like, why didn't they use, they could have used somebody that could have like connected it. And, yeah, hadn't even, hadn't even, yeah, it was it, quite, kind of so quick that you kind of missed it. 
I mean, they do chase him through the forest for like five minutes, but yeah. But if you uh, didn't yeah. catch the name, you didn't. You oh just, yeah, yeah. That was well, they, probably the thing. I didn't catch the name, and therefore I'd completely just. Um, and I just it was like he's just ch- chasing some random kid through, and um. So that was the, that was the only issue. I missed him them saying his name. Um, uh, well, yeah. keeping in mind, of course, they didn't call him Kanan. They called him his original name, Caleb Doom. Yeah. Uh, the weird part about it was they still got Freddie Prince Jr. to voice him, even though he was like a 12 year old in this. And just like <laughs> his voice is weird. <laughs> but yeah, I get why they did it. Yeah. It, yeah. So that was the only thing I missed with that one. But um, I liked that they spent a little bit longer on this episode establishing what was going on and not making it a straight up like these guys have haven't been turned and therefore they're instantly the enemy. It's along the lines of no, they're still part of the, they are an, part of the empire. And as far as they are, the empire is concerned, they're just another set of troopers. They're just another asset. Um, but they have to, but because they don't have the chip, they need to be tested a little bit just to um, prove if they are, you know, if they should be hanging around. Well, it doesn't seem like they don't have the chip. It just seems like they're so willful that they just kind of overrode it. Kind of the way, um, not yeah. Rex. Um, it, I think it might have been Rex. Uh, over in Clone Wars in the final season, the last yeah. couple episodes there. Uh, because... Crosshair obviously is getting impacted by it. Like he didn't turn yeah. into a full clone trooper. Like no. uh, the Emperor is great, but it influenced him enough that he turned on his comrades, or they turned on him. Depending on the only thing I did have an issue with that is I really think they oversold that. I think they really. It was a bit of like okay, so we, it's like we maybe just needed that once, you know, that kind of thing of, to show him. So then when they revved him up, that made it more the fact that he he'd been turned rather than he. I think by the time they got to that point, where well, you've already like he's already shown on multiple occasions that he's not um, fully invested in this, you know. And I felt that was a little bit like hammed up a little bit. They could have done with like toning that down a little. Um, yeah, but again, it's it's the target it's audience. Show, yeah. yeah, it's a kids show. So sometimes when you, you have adults watching, you're like, okay, I I see where you're going with this, but kids do need to be led to the point sometimes. Uh, yeah. Um, the only the uh, I. There's a lot of the show. Like the one thing I'm not, I was like, was the use of Omega. It was a little bit like, oh, do we need, do we need her? It was like this is that kind of. I know she's going to be the primary drive, and it's going to be the thing that the kids connect to. to but I was a little bit along the lines of, oh, I don't need this. Uh, I wow. know it's, <laughs> it's the kind of the the main thing with Star Wars, really, of having. You look at it. It's always been about, uh, you know, mentor and student. You know, now we've got Hunter and Omega. Those are the new ways. That's the new one. Um, that's how this series is going to go on. You know, we've seen it before. We've seen it in everything. You know, we saw it in both the and all the animated series. They've had this kind of same dynamic. Makes sense. But I was a little bit on the lines of, oh, I wasn't really expecting this from this <laughs> series. I was like, um, yeah. yeah. I mean, she's definitely playing the Ahsoka role in yeah. this one. So we'll see what direction they go with her. I, I do find her at least interesting. Like, she's a clone, but... She's also a girl, which means she's already different than all the other clones. And we'll see in what other ways she is different. Yeah. Because it, um, I'm not really too sure like what her skills are going to be. I'm assuming maybe a pilot because that way they can keep her safe. Um, that would be, but um, I thought like the first episode did a very good job because I think the first episode was primarily focused on the guys of just like getting them established. And I was really interested in this, like how, crossover of how the republic become the galactic empire and it looks like they're going to explore that a little bit more of you know the changeover how people adapt to it how people because kind of you know it's been like right the republic just becomes the empire but it would have been a transition period and you know people getting used to the changeover and people starting to question because at the time you have to think well everyone would have been happy the war was over and then suddenly you know, the same people are running it and then they're getting a little bit aggressive. You know, you know, they would have had to been, you know, I mean, I did find like with Saul Grey, you know, the rebel was along going, well, why would they have rebels yet? They only been made a day ago. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a little bit like, well, they, they've got nothing to rebel against yet. They've, they've just been, you know. That, and we now have like several different starting points of the rebellion. We've got Saw, we've got Jin, yeah. we've got, um, all these other characters going around. Um, I kind of wish they would just kind of pick one. And and you've also got that whole thing where like uh, the Empire forms and Grand Moff Tarkin is immediate, well, he's not Grand Moff yet, but he's immediately like, 
let's get rid of all these clone troopers and let's just conscript everybody. I'm like, uh, yeah. yeah. It might take a little bit longer than that. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely kind of speed it up. But then I suppose the whole thing of it was about them trying to get rid of them. And it kind of set that, you know, the whole thing of him just trying to, not necessarily kill them, but he was really testing them to make sure if they were right. I really well, enjoyed that <laughs> first, yeah. I don't think he was testing so much. He was hoping that they would prove to be ineffective and then he would push through the Stormtrooper program. But yeah. obviously it didn't quite work out. Sorry, I cut you off there. Yeah. No, but I, um, I enjoyed that first episode. I thought that was great. A great introduction. I think the longer episode really helped rather than what they did with the Clone Wars where they kind of got introduced over four episodes. This made a lot more sense. Um, I really enjoyed it. The second episode was a little bit more um, paint by numbers in terms of what they were doing. Um, it definitely felt like they eased off the pedal a little bit because they just had to establish the father-daughter kind of mental connection between Omega and uh, Hunter. The other characters seem to have been like lost in the shuffle a little bit because they're primarily focused on those characters, which makes sense. You know, Tech and Echo, they kind of feel a little bit too similar at the minute. They need a little bit of like... You know, Wrecker just kind of is he's kind of the big brute, the big dumb brute that just comes in and hits stuff. Um, but Tech and Echo kind of feel a bit kind of similar at the minute. Yeah, I'm sure they'll find a way to differentiate them mm. at some point. Uh, but I, I have a hard time with thinking of this character as Echo to begin with. Like in my mind, Echo is still dead. Like he, he died back in Clone Wars in this character yeah. that they introduced in the in season in the final season, and then now I'm like this isn't really echo anymore, but we'll, we've got another 14 or ish episodes. At least uh, we'll see how they distinguish and see how they tie echo back into his history. Yeah. I mean, obviously this week as well. I mean, they announced loads of, you know, loads of merch for it, you know, all the hot toys, um, you know, Lego sets things. So we're going to see lots more of this. Um, and I'm sure that you'll, um, that's definitely gonna be a problem for me. Um, <laughs> I, that, I will admit that Lego set looks pretty nice. The, yeah, so uh, the, I, I, but it was kind of funny logging on to Shop Disney on, on May the 4th because, you know, obviously yeah. all the deals and so much Bad Batch stuff. And it's like, no one's had a chance to watch this yet. I mean, it, it would release that same day, but. Yeah, and it kind of, it, in some ways as well, it does feel like, well, why weren't, why weren't the pops and the, and the action figures available? Because we'd seen these characters. I mean, obviously, like, other than the red outfit, but it was a little bit like, okay, we've seen these guys already in Clone Wars. It, it would have been, made sense to have them available. Um but so that's my one little issue but overall i i enjoyed the bad batch i'm looking forward to and i'm sure i'm gonna grow because i see i was one of these people with both rebels and clone wars where i was very late on them um i tried watching both of them at the beginning and fell off so i I know i'm not going to do the same with bad batch but those were shows that took me a little bit of time to get rid of i mean clone wars took a couple of seasons before that one kind of warmed up and i said maybe even say the same with rebels you know they would agree they tend to take a while to grow. Um, and I just know I, I'm in, I know, I know I'm going to end up with, you know, loads of like, you know, I can't wait, you know, I'll end up with like Legion and X, X wing and all this kind of stuff will all be kicking in. Eventually it just takes a while sometimes for them to fire up, but I'm really excited about this series, seeing where it goes, but at the same time, knowing that it's a, it's an animated series. So you just have to lower the expectations down a little bit. They can do stuff that they can't do in the movies and in the series, but at the same time, they sometimes have to revert back to being a cartoon. So um, yeah, great to have it. We can't expect the last four episodes of Clone Wars for every single no. episode of Bad Batch. That'd just be unreasonable. Um, like you said, I'll just finish up with this. The I, I'm not hugely enamored to it yet, mm-hmm. but like you said, the first season of Rebels was pretty rough and it didn't really start going until the second season Clone Wars. I mean, maybe not even until like Darth Maul showed up. It, yeah. it took a while. Yeah, I think uh, Thrawn was the one that really made it, it was, me a bit more interested. Um, Thrawn was the Rebels. When, when he showed up, the, the that show really kicked in. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how like, Crosshair, and there's also another villain that was revealed in an action figure. Um, that, uh, the how ramp, they... Rampart? Yeah, I mean, I literally got like, we have no idea who that one is. So they've not really even established like the villains really yet. And obviously episode two wasn't really about that. Um, but I'm actually kind of liking the idea of them like, don't go straight down the them being hunted route. Let them like, you know, they have to do something to be on their radar. Because right? at the minute, they've just escaped. You know, they're, they're no threat to the Empire. They're, you know, they're, they're not going to be chased down. But they are going to have to do some stuff. And it looks like they'll become like mercenaries and that'll be the way they kind of get in. Um, 
but yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. Um, Wrecker is definitely the one I'm kind of drawn to the most as, as a character because um, he, he, he's, he's different. He's different to everybody else. Um, and so that would be cool. And also Crosshair could be really interesting. But it's kind of odd having a sharpshooter as a main villain because as a sharpshooter, he's always going to be far away. <laughs> um, oh, and not even just far away. In theory, he should just be able to snipe all of them and the, and the show will be over. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I play a lot of video games and I don't mind, you know, playing the, the sharpshooter and staying back and out at the issues. And that, that was maybe like, I think that idea of, of having played a lot of sharpshooting games, you know, that you do kind of hang back for that reason. You don't get up and close and personal. Whereas someone like, if it was a video game, which I hope they do make something along the lines of Wrecker is that kind of straight up melee, a big attacker straight at the beginning kind of thing. So again, uh, it's so funny how video games sometimes it can twist how you you instantly i think so many video games have this aspect where you have a, a team of four or five characters and they've all got unique skills because they allow you to play the different the healer the you know it's like it, like it feels like a perfect video game team well i did play um republic commando this past mm-hmm. week for for may uh yeah. sorry for for star wars day and i i was just like Yep, this is the squad. They have they obviously have one more in the bad batch, but this is the squad. You've got the sniper, you got the healer, you got the tech guy, and you got the leader, which is the person yeah. you play as. And it's like, yeah, this is yeah. it. <laughs> perfect, perfect. So let's move now away from Star Wars. Let's talk now about some of the other shows. Um, so just gonna bring up here um Solar Opposites this week. Um, another crazy episode where um <laughs> A, a red goobler which is created from a solar opposite when they get really really like angry and like upset these little things come out and it's continued to grow and so rather than try and kill him it ended up becoming a, a basically a human person wanted to get married to a girl and uh, it's a whole thing they end up turning his wife in his future wife into a rat and there's a whole load of um competing in the trying to compete in the olympics with time looping it's just bonkers and it makes no sense again, but you, this is, if you like South Park, check this series out. It is bonkers. It's a, this, I'm going to be honest, this one was a little bit like, um, there's some, some scenes in this one. And you're like, Ooh. <laughs> it's just like, it's maybe, just, yeah. maybe don't have the kids watching this one. Huh? This one is definitely not for kids. <laughs> a couple of scenes in this one is just like, yep. No. Um, so that one was good. We also had a new episode of Grownish it's from season three. I'm really enjoying this series so far. Kind of weird with the third season where it's kind of shifted um, to them. They're at university, but now they all have a house and one of them's come back and she's pregnant. And having, I've, I have plowed through like, I'm on to season three of Blackish. So I'm kind of really in this zone at the minute of watching this like universe. And it was like, it feels so different than the first season where they were like very much at university. The second season, you know, with them being moved out onto a house, they've kind of lost that, vibe of being on the dorms and all the rest of it um so it'll be interesting how all this turn, turns out and we also start watching i watched the first episode of genius the one with einstein that was that was a bit different than i was expecting um because obviously we've got the third season dropping in june in the uk not that they're interconnected but it was kind of like i probably should start trying to watch this one so that was something that we've been watching um but yeah so that was that was some of the star content we also had like the finale of Dollface um, this week and Filthy Rich, but I'm not watching either of those two shows. Let's now move on to some of the other Disney Plus originals. So Mighty Ducks Game Changers. So this episode involved them going out to a pond. Now this is where um, I feel like this is going to be something, the difference between the two of us, of someone that lives in a place where hockey isn't a thing and doesn't, you know, if we get some ice and snow, it's about enough to add like, maybe a millimeter of ice on a puddle that's kind of as thick as our ice will ever get um and you might you know you might find a dog bowl might freeze over kind of thing <laughs> so the whole concept of them and i so therefore that makes it a bit difficult i have i was lucky enough that um years ago when i was out in canada we did go to a frozen lake and i remember walking on it and it was a bit slushy and it was a bit like sketchy it was just like whoa it was just like this no, no, no. is really really don't, don't really... walk on it don't walk yeah. on it when it's slushy man <laughs> well it was a little well the guy took us out on there and i'm like whoa i don't like this at all and um so watching this episode back it was a bit like like me going is this the... and then like they make a little bit joke about it being safe for the kids and you know 
getting back to basics and stuff. And I understood where they were going for it. But I was a bit like, okay, we're really kind of abandoning. And it looked so much like a set. I mean, it was... Oh, yeah. It just looked like they'd just gone into a Christmas grotto and filmed it. Um, I don't think they were even on ice, honestly. I think they were on synthetic ice. Well, my big problem with this episode was, like we said before about the fact that they had to break up in order to come back together again. And they kind of came back together again so quickly. It didn't really... It was like, well, what did we do do that for? It didn't matter. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, they, it was over and done with so quickly. I was like, okay, I was expecting them to stretch it out a little bit more than that. <laughs> I was expecting it to to take the entire episode at the very least. I mean, they had the one kid who like flipped out and was like, I can't do this anymore. But they resolved that quickly too. Like, no, you can do this. You should join us and be crazy. And he's like, you're right. I should join you and be crazy. Yeah. And that was the end of that story. Like, uh, okay, sure. Yeah. Um, it was definitely a much faster, so much faster than I was expecting. Um, yeah, and it was like, yeah, I don't know where they're going. It doesn't feel like there's any, um, like overstoring arc. I mean, you know, and it doesn't like, I don't know, they're in no fit state yet to be in the championships league or, or even like start talking about that. And it just feels like, okay, I know they might be setting up for the second season, but that may be it. I mean, it kind of feels like their first, they should have had the win as their big thing of the season. There's like one win would have been enough, just like, and they kind of did that one and you like moved on, like, well, you know, we're near ready. <laughs> just like, I mean, your goalie like still, yeah. at least your goalie learned how to do the butterfly, but geez, that, that goalie is not going to hold up well under like actual shooters. Yeah. Uh, so we'll, we'll see where they're going with that. I am glad that they finally addressed the fact that the goalie is Swiss cheese in that. Yeah. Uh, it's not, not great, but yeah, I, what I wanted to say about this was like pond hockey is it's an interesting phenomenon within the hockey world. Like a lot of places you can't do it. Uh, even yeah. in the States, I can do it here in Colorado, but I have to go pretty far out into the yeah. countryside to do it. Obviously Canada, it's basically a way of life. I mean, that's what mystery yeah. Alaska was about. Um, but I think all sports have this kind of like low key, um, version of them like soccer, you've yeah. got street ball, and uh, well, you, you know, just play- go to the field, you go to the fields on a, on a Sunday morning, that kind of thing, you know, that yeah, kind of- or, or not even that. You might go over to, to like one of the whatever version of a basketball court, it's all caged yeah. in, it's much smaller. Basketball, of course, has, has that as well. Football, you know, flag football, things like that. And pond hockey is just the hockey version of it. But I will say, there is a certain amount of fun nostalgia for pond hockey. Now I didn't do it growing up. I did not live in an area where it was growing up, but I think most hockey players have like that. Yeah. I just skated out onto a huge Lake and we passed the puck around and, and, and had fun. And that was the other thing is this pond, in addition to looking like a set was tiny, like yeah. absolutely minuscule. It's like, you are not doing t- a, a team practice on this ice. You are going to run into each other, yeah, which just, they it- did. Yeah, it was, it was definitely, I mean, the whole thing, like, I like the idea that they did the whole thing of, um, A, trying to put them into a room together and that didn't work. You know, that, that whole thing of like, let's just put them in a room. It's like, yeah, that doesn't gonna, it wasn't gonna work. And then trying to blindfold them didn't work. You know, some of like these kind of like cliche things that they would do, but like, no, that doesn't work. They just, you know, and um, Bombay's idea is just, just get them on the ice and just have some fun. That was his way of fixing them. And which was such more simplistic. (laughs) You can, I I do like that. They framed it as Bombay knows what he's doing. The mom doesn't, they both know it. Uh, She tries, but uh, no, Bombay's the actual coach. He he knows how to do these things. I will say the blindfold thing made me cringe. Uh, Not so much the practice. That was like, whatever you're going to do, silly practice. in In the end. But at the end, I was like, this is how you get injured because you close your eyes. You were going to get checked really hard it, and you're not gonna have any chance to prepare it for was it. so corny because you're just like this is you know, like the whole team just closes their eye oh they're scared no they just push them over yeah seriously how did <laughs> how did he and the, and the other guy on the other side of the face off's like why'd you close your eyes and he backs off and you're like you're an idiot you, you yeah. know what, what are you doing and then of course they're standing there for long periods of time like yeah. listening i guess and it's like any defensive player with half a brain is knocking you over, stealing the puck and getting a breakaway. I, that was, I, it's the mighty ducks. I get it. They're, they're supposed to do fun things yeah. like the flying V and yeah. Yeah, and it's just like, 
this is how people get hurt, honestly. Yeah, it, it, to me, it felt a little bit along the lines because they hadn't even mastered it in the practice. They needed to have, it would have made a little bit more sense had they done it in the practice and mastered it and then taken the skill instead of, you know, we're going to put you in, a, in the in the ice palace and then get you to do it. It's like, yeah, you've not even practiced. I don't know. It, 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 this episode was one of those ones of like, I really got to the end of it. I didn't really think much of this episode. I got, I, it was like, it was so average. It, I think I gave it like a 2.5 or a 3. It was so kind of like, ugh. Well, I, a, think, yeah. I think you touched on it earlier, maybe unintentionally, but yeah. the editing in this episode was really bad. Like they they had the storyline carrying over from the previous episode where, oh, we're, we're a broken team and we don't trust yeah. our captain. And like, oh, we fixed that. And then yeah. the, the one kid's like, I, I don't want to play for you anymore. Okay, I'll play for you again. And then the, and then the goalie is like, "Well, all you have to do is is learn how to skate." I can't skate. Oh, now you can skate. And yeah. that that was it. It really felt like they they had like four different episodes here, and they mashed them all into a single one, uh, for whatever reason. But th- this yeah. feels like the editor really got the short end of the stick. I don't want to blame the editor for it. No. More often than not, they don't have much choice in the matter. But my this problem, definitely felt yeah. problematic. My, one of Sorry, my problems ahead. with this series so far is something happens once and then they use the recap at the beginning to keep keep leveling it on. So rather than like in a normal series like um, where they might mention something like they did in, in Bad Batch where they kept where they kept doing with crosshair, where the, he kept like imming and ahhing and kind of being Fuck. We follow yeah, they, orders. Yeah, you know, and they and he kept they reinforced it. With Mighty Ducks, they don't reinforce everything. They just show the highlight from the previous episode and then fix it. They're not. It's in one way it feels rushed because they're trying to rush. It feels like, and then at the same time, it feels like a filler. It's like it's like really weird thing. They're not taking the time to establish stuff properly and then taking a shortcut just to get there. And I know why it's like. But we had the time, but you're using it in weird ways of like, you know, we had the whole nostalgia thing last week. Gone, gone, moved on. And we're only on like 25 minute shows. It just feels like they're not they're not connecting very well. It's very much seems to be it's I know it's, it's that kind of thing. It's it's aimed at a younger audience, but it's kind of quite fast of how quickly it feels more like a movie in terms of how quickly they're trying to establish stuff. Yeah, and it'll be interesting because they only have a handful of episodes left. I mean, they, they've got a decent number, but yeah. it, presumably they're going to get to a point where the final episode or the final two episodes are are them versus the Ducks, and it's going yeah. to be this big thing. And like you said earlier, it's like they, they're not ready for that at all. But again, it just feels like the show's taking shortcuts to get there because they're mm-hmm. trying to speed this process up. Um, of like, they can't, they shouldn't be, then there's no way they can, you know, you're kind of looking at Okay, yeah, I know big teams lose to little teams all the time, but this is a team that haven't got any skill. You know, you went from, you know, the goalie could only just learn to skate, and now he's in the fight. Just, I don't know, I'm just really struggling with this whole aspect with Mighty Ducks. It just, it feels like they're taking, they, the whole thing to me should have been we faced for what we get a win. That should have been the end of the series. And then you go into season two or three of them finally getting good enough to challenge the Ducks and all the rest. Of it. It just feels like we're speeding through this process um, really quickly. And this team, just, yeah, it, that's my issue. Like, that's, it's, they're basically taking a movie and they're trying to squeeze it into 10 episodes. But suddenly then we've had some middle filler episodes. And it just, I don't know. It's, I, I was really disappointed with this episode. Yeah, it feels like they're not entirely sure what the identity of this show should be. Uh, And I kind of get the impression that they were expecting longer episodes. Like that would explain some of the editing weirdness. Mm -hmm. Like if they had another 10 minutes to play with these storylines, it probably would have been really helpful. Uh, So I'm, I'm wondering if the plan was always like a 20 ish, 20, uh, sorry, 25, 30 minute, or if they had planned to do something a little longer, like big shot. But also, I mean, there's the whole thing like with the romance story. I mean, that's just doesn't been touched for two seasons, two, three episodes. You know, okay, they like they don't even they're not even doing anything remotely. Even like they're just spending time together, but there's nothing going on there. Um, that story so seems to be going, and you know the friendships between some of the characters. You know, they just not spending a lot of time on stuff, and it's very strange. It doesn't, um, you know, you know this team that's come together. It's like you know, like Nick, the best friend. You know, he just pops in, says a line or two, and he's been kind of shoved to the side as well, and you know the guy with the hair, everyone just seems yeah. to be just speeding through it all very quickly. 
Yeah, we we still don't know several of these characters. Like yeah. we, we know their basics. We know the guy with the hair. Like he couldn't skate, but now he seems to be doing okay. But we don't really know his story other than his parents are divorced. That's about yeah. the extent of it. Um, that yeah. I feel like they could be taking a better advantage of the television form, well, the streaming format uh, to explore these characters. It makes sense that you don't spend a lot of time with these characters in a movie. You can only yeah. focus on so many in a movie, but you have a show and sure. It's only a 20 minute show, but you're still going to get a lot longer than a movie by the time it's done. And I mean, to be honest, this is where we move to shift over now to big shot or it feels like this is the, doing the things that we're talking about, where it's taking the time to build the team up where they are, establishing who they are establishing i don't i mean an extra 10 to 15 minutes per episode but it's just the way they're doing it i mean you know this whole new episode this week focused on one one of the characters one of the issues that she had and how the team reacted to that and it just felt a little bit more natural you know um and i bet this like whole story with um her having an issue with being an influencer and signing contracts and not you know, I understood, you know, where she was coming from was so much more along the lines of, you know, if, you know, I, I get messages coming through from companies all the time asking to do stuff. And 99% of the time I just delete the email because it's like, doesn't fit, doesn't, it's not, you know, I'm not going anywhere near that with a barge pro because it doesn't, it's not something I'm interested in or it's, it doesn't fit because I'm a 40 year old man that understands, but as a, a teenager, you know, you could fall for this stuff of, you know, here's some things. And I, you know, the whole aspect of her, she did it, she didn't like it. And then she just told her, you know, she was getting bad comments and so reacted to it. And ultimately it was like, well, why on earth was a 17 year old signing a, a, a contract? It would be none and void anyway. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I like, think that's, I think I mean, that's I like, the point I, they made at the end, right? I mean, I really liked that whole aspect with the, the principal really laying and defending him so, it was nice to see her character come out a little bit more in this one where she was, you know, like, you know, obviously likes kids and likes to get the better, you know, and she defended them and it was like along the lines of, you know, and I, and it showed so much power from her character of just like, you know, straight up, like, um, well, like, we're coming for you and we'll get all of our, you know, and it, like, it made sense because it, you know, that would be really realistically like, well, you had a, a minor sign a contract is, it doesn't matter um so i i I, t I you know the whole thing of her trying to pretend to be rich to fit in i mean the only thing that did get me again with the editing was this one was you know we spent so long establishing that there was this um scholarship and they wasted no t they didn't waste any of the time they're like yeah we're trying to get this one she needs us she's run out of money and she's going to do school next thing they're at the dinner table here's a here's a scholarship and like and i was i remember going whoa they just skipped over like 10 to 15 minutes of fluff. They just went straight. They went, oh, no, we're fine. We'll, we'll, they don't know where we're going. And I was like, well, that was, they could, they, you, that would have normally been like stretched out so much longer than it was. And I thought that was a bit odd. I, I kind of gave them the benefit of the doubt on that one, mostly because it seemed like uh, Stamos's character was like, I've got to use this scholarship. I have authorization for the scholarship. I have somebody who can use it. But if I let it sit, the principal is just going to take it back when she realizes that yeah. we're not getting the superstar player. So he's like, uh, it's going to be much easier for me to ask for uh, forgiveness than it will be for permission. And so he just does it. Uh, yeah. So I was willing to give them that. But I also agree. It was it was a very sudden shift. They could have done was just like one little scene in between him of him learning the problem. He just mm. needed to because at the time he didn't know anything about it um, until he was really kind of. Yeah, I don't know. He, obviously, he was in the in the principal office with the lawyer and stuff, but it, it was quite quick. I'm glad they just kind of glossed over it and moved on from it. But again, we're at that point now where they're practicing. You know, there's a little bit of development between the characters, um, of, of like a bit of mistrust between the girls, and the idea of their group being broken by bringing somebody else in, um, and also just as a whole, just um, sort of Marvin's character growing of everyone feeling sorry for him and him really not hit that being so bad, him hating it, you know, and everyone like looking at him funny and like, you know, and they really hammed it up with that whole aspect of him, like of everyone going, oh, you know, I mean, the, the, what we thought was going to be a hit piece didn't turn into a hit piece at all. You know, she did a full on, you know, like just turned him into, because she's obviously saw something in him that the, 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 the when the daughter talked about it, 
they went she went in a different line but it was such an interesting way of i, I think it, at all the way i thought it was gonna no i i was pretty sure i think you mentioned last year it was going to yeah. be a hit piece but i i think when she talked to his daughter uh that's when she had that that revelation shift yeah, you mentioned that um yeah. And it's kind of like, oh, no, there is substance to this story. Plus, she was having a hard time getting a lot of the other girls to, mm. to badmouth him. I mean, mm. she got a couple, obviously. Yeah. But for the most part, it was like, no, he's like a father figure to me. And, mm. and he he told us we, we can be better. And it's like, oh, OK, eh, not bad. Yeah. It, it just again, it just for me. And it feels like Big Shot has been so overlooked. Um, it gets overlooked because of you know, like publicity and you know so much other stuff going on. You know, it had Falcon to compete with, and now it's got Bad Batch, and then it's going to have High School Music. You know, there's so much other stuff going on, and I'm sitting here and like having watched like Mighty Ducks and Big Shot back to back, I'm just sitting there going, "Wow, Big Shot's such a, such a better show to, for me." To, I'm enjoying it so much more than Mighty Ducks because they're a little bit older. They're spending, a, they got that extra 10, 15 minutes to kind of flesh out the characters a little bit more. The coach is much more interesting than the two parents from Mighty Ducks. They're, they're very one dimensional. Like even Coach Bombay is very one dimensional. He, he's um, the guy who's good at hockey. That's, yeah. that's, his, that's his thing. Yeah. And I, I, I just feel like they're, they're, so, they're so close together. We still wish they separate, separated them up a little bit. But in some ways, it highlights the problem. For me because i'm looking at go i'm really like big shot was the one it's such a better show just for me oh four episodes in it's it's, it's in a different league to the mighty ducks it's just handling its subjects so much more maturely and and accurately it's not holding us with with kid hands no. it, it's it, i mean it's not going all out it's not going no. like these are the problems of teenagers and, and going like mtv but it feels more authentic or at least it feels more more real than than most of these shows in particular the mighty ducks obviously it, it, it's still a um a prettified disneyfied yeah. version of high school but still uh they're they're actually tackling legit things and the whole instagram influencer thing there's a lot of people who could learn from that uh especially the contracts parts but also the lying part you know yeah. uh and I think a lot of people can actually relate to that idea as well, too. Like yeah. the, uh, a lie that just grows so big, you, you have to keep it going because of the damage it'll cause when, you, when it comes out. Yeah. And I mean, if so many people have got, you know, this whole thing of like, you know, using, using filters and just like, I mean, they kind of made, they made a joke about the fact of, you know, they all use filters to kind of hide stuff. And, but it's that thing of it's so, I mean, this is such a big issue for, for everybody and it's not just teenagers this is you know adults have the same problem i think it's worse for teenagers in some way but you know the whole you know the, you know selfies and making everything look great and your life's awesome and you know that whole thing i thought was because again you know she's at the house and she's showing off and then suddenly she's at her parents house and they've got no money and they're all it's like oh okay so they've done a they've done a good job of setting her up as and everyone does make that assumption that if you're at a private school you're rich um um, I used to employ quite a few um, kids from a local private school. And I'm going to be honest, having spent like time with them and talking to them, you know, you started realizing what their parents were doing, you know, like, oh, my granddad pays for it. So it's like the parents aren't rich. It's like, you know, they, they it was being paid for by granddad or, um, oh, well, you know, she was struggling at school. So the parents are doing everything they can to get her, you know, there was a few like these different things are going like, you know, the parents necessarily weren't rich and sending them off to private school, you know, cause they didn't want, you know, and they still live with their parents and all the rest of it. And it was, I think that changed my mind. And I think Big Shot is helping like, it's, they are at a private school, but it's not necessarily that if you were at a private school, everything's, you know, your parents are millionaires, you know, that kind of territory, which I thought was interesting. And, I, and they get even more pressure than to keep up. Yeah, and she's got to keep up the appearances as best she can because she wants to to be part of the in crowd. And I think yeah. what she hopefully will eventually realize is there are a lot more kids in her situation than she realizes. Mm -hmm. And they're all doing the same thing where they're pretending that they're not in that situation. Mm -hmm. But I think there are a fair number of people in private schools across the world who are have parents, both parents, running two jobs and, and running themselves ragged to make sure their kid has a better life. Mm -hmm. 
But yeah, but it's just, it's just as a whole, really enjoyed this week's episode of Big Shot. Def- to me, like I said, in a completely different league than um, the Mighty Ducks this week. Um, in a way, we sh- wouldn't normally have to compare them. If they were separate, we wouldn't have to. Um, but yeah, again, a nice little variety this week between all the shows. Next week, we have got High School Musical, the musical, the series dropping. Got the first episode dropping on Friday, along with Bad Batch. I think that's the that's the main new one next week. Um, so again, we got another shoe new show. <laughs> Another new show around kids. That, I mean, it's that, Disney, so. Yeah, it, I think it's just the fact of free high free free series set in high school, is the one of like. Well, the ducks aren't high school. Well, yeah, they're what, pretty what, close. What age are they? Well, if they're in the twelve to thirteen, I think that would put them in like upper middle school. Yes. Yeah, like, granted, it's been been a while since I've been in high school. See, like here in the UK, like eleven to sixteen is high school. Uh, um. So then, like the the. Big shot would actually probably be they would be in college, but then we have college and then we have university. So there's a um, so there's that little bit of thing. So there is that to me it's like they're all high school, you know, and so, and even some of the kids now stay at high school till they're eighteen. So like, it, yeah, for me it's like eleven to eighteen is high school territory. So um, to me it's just like there is just in different re- years. But then we got um, Diary of a F- Future President coming in as well at some point. I'd imagine at the end of the year when some of these have ended but nice to have, nice to have some choice All right uh, <laughs> it's it's just so surprising that disney would have so many shows focused on teenagers and preteens i mean i don't yeah and then i mean we're gonna um not ne- ne- next week not next week the week after we've then got rebel oh, we've got rebel at the end of the month then we've also got um modok starting in two weeks in the uk and then we've also got a um, big sky returning so nice bit of in a maze not too bad i think modok is dropping at the same time though right it's on hulu over here and yes in, but it's uh, the same day yes on, on hulu they're dropping all 10 episodes in the rest of the world in canada australia uk huh. etc we're getting them weekly so um i don't know why they can't but at least we're getting it on the same day and they did the same, they almost did the same thing with Solar Opposites. They got the whole second season on one day. We're getting them weekly. So um, yeah, I, I think mean, that's, we, that's probably just because that's the expectation on Hulu. You get the full drop at once. Yeah, they definitely kind of, and then we're going to have, it's, it, it is just great. It is just great having all these different shows to watch. Um, it's nice firing up Disney Plus multiple times a week or daily now. It's rather than rather than the Fridays. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for joining us. As I said, thank you very much to all of our patrons and YouTube channel members for your support. Thank you very much for all of that. And again, you can find us over at What's on Disney Plus. You know, join our Facebook group. You can also find us on Twitter, etc. And on that note, guys, thank you very much. May the force be with you. May the force be with you, even though it's several days ago. <laughs>